All right. I uh, came back from a good drive today, and uh, it's, I've probably driven around 700 kilos or so. So what I'm going to do now is do a quick oil change. Um, I'm expecting uh, some metal, not like bearing metal or anything, but metal from the um, the piston rings and them mating with the cylinder walls. That's going to create metal inside of there. And it's known for an engine, a new engine to do that. So what you want to do is get your oil, check it, I've cleaned out one of my buckets, got my light, got a rag, and especially like the first little bit of a uh, good bit of oil coming out, you want to check it, look at it, just look it over, um, make sure it's not like heavily, heavy, like super thick flakes of oil, uh, metal, but let's check that out right now. Here under the car, got my 17 mil, got my bucket. Let's see what we got. All right, just broke the nut loose. What I'm gonna do is slide this under there. Uh, go ahead and get. This is a magnetic plug, so I should catch some of it also. But I want to see, um, especially. When it start coming out, I want to see what, you know, what's coming out. So let's set my light up here to a good position. And we're going to take it up. As I said, I expect it to be a good amount of stuff in there which is normal this is normal pretty much this is cleaning the engine out from any debris or anything that's in there from before all right that's a lot of oil uh, is it gonna fill this up don't know guess we'll find out hopefully not I don't think so I hope not. All right. Are you done? Finished? Please? Getting pretty close to that line there, buddy. Pretty close. All right, let's turn this this way. So it does not uh, splat on the floor. Oh, damn. How much water I got in this mouth? Little bubble. I mean, it is an extended sump, and I got a oil cooler, so probably has a good amount. Glad I didn't put that five, uh, that, the other bucket on here, that smaller one, because uh, that would have been catastrophic and oil all over the place. So, let's see. I mean, it picked up something. We'll, we'll pull this out and yeah, look at it. All right. This is what we have on the magnet that's on the, uh, the drain plug. Uh, if you don't have one of these, I really suggest you get one. It could be a lifesaver from any metal. It's not going to catch all of it, but any of it that gets like near this magnet is going to get trapped. Um, Nori has a thing where it'll go on your oil filter and it's like a super duper strong magnetic, um, like clamp like thing. And it goes on your oil filter and it will catch anything that's magnetic that comes through there. I wish I had that. Let's see. Let's get most of that off. I mean, it's coming off. Some of this feels like Yeah, it's not bad. Like I said, uh oh crap. Some of this feel like some of the assembly fluid assembly lube. 
I don't know for sure if um, anti seize is magnetic. If it is, kind of feels like anti seize. But I'll clean that off real good. I will pull this pan out. Let me clean that off, stick it back in the plug, and then we'll pull the pan out. Alrighty, now let's get this oil filter off. Which I think I put it on for good. Oh, damn. Yeah, it's on there pretty good, Pauls. And yes, on this, I am using just a regular generic oil filter. Uh, I got a Nismo oil filter, but that's when I get ready to put in my uh, the, the good oil. So uh, these right here will do the job until then. That's the part number, if anyone's wondering. Uh, with the RBs, you can use a, has a bigger, fil bigger filter that you can use, and there's a smaller one. So the FC218 is a smaller one, and I don't know the part number for the bigger one, but just reference. And as you can see there, let me see if I turn this light on. I mean, it's not much, but I mean, I did see literally that's just metal from the cylinder walls and the piston ring seating with each other. Um, this oil filter is doing the job. You can see that in there. Don't know for sure. It's gonna be hard. It's hard to focus that camera down up in the oil filter, but it, it is. It's working. I can see little metal flakes on there, but that's just an air bubble that's floating around up top. But nothing heavy or any major flakes or anything. So that's a good sign. Uh, with this, it's going to take a couple of drains for this oil to get clean. So, it is just, I'm um, doing this initial uh, drain. And then I'll probably do two more with just regular uh, 10W30 oil. And then after that, I'll go with the synthetic. But, yep. That's what we'll do. Let me show you guys the oil pan. And just one more tip. Try and clean as much as you can around the, uh, the housing just to get any old uh, oil that's in there out. Uh, that's just pretty much trying to leave any debris that's left in there. Alright, what I'm going to do now is try and slide this out very carefully because it's, it's full. Emma. see that's what we got oh. see if we can get some good light on there Turn that one on direct it's not like terrible I, uh, like I said you're gonna see flakes but nothing nothing that's heavy that's what you don't want you don't want any heavy flakes in there um, that's exactly from uh the machine shop clean the engine from pretty much from uh, the piston uh and cylinder rings meshing with each other to match for life so this is not a bad thing this is just what will happen if you do get a new engine this is what your uh this is what your engine builder is telling you to break the engine in but You can see. I think the oil's clean. This is from all the um, from all the metal. This this is gonna happen. So until you really do quite a few oil changes, it's not gonna stop. As long as you don't have any heavy metal flaking coming out of it, you're good to go. So. We'll do that. Uh, right now I'm gonna fill it back up with, right now what I'm using is Pinzoil 10W30. As I stated before with this, you don't wanna use synthetic when breaking the engine in. You want the cylinder walls to get that heat. You want to build some, um, some heat inside of that. So you wanna use non-synthetic oil. So Pinzoil 
mm -hmm. 10W30 is what I'm using. Some people say use Castor Oil GTX, but the one I got said it's a synthetic blend, and I'm trying not to use the synthetic oil at all. So fill it back up with the Pennzoil, and we'll go from there again. We'll do maybe two more oil changes with the Pennzoil, and we'll have this baby running in tip top tippity dippity shape, baby. Tip top shape.